Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Britta, I'm from ZSK and I will introduce you to our new quick text function now. Right, in this and any other webinar, we will now um, in the future introduce you to the new functions we have at ZSK. If there are any other topics we come across that uh, questions arise all the time, we will turn it into a video and we will provide you a certain time where you're then able to contact me directly and get like a direct answer and question and answer hour. Uh, today our first topic will be the quick text function. That means we literally load a text file into our base pack and then it will be turned into a, um, into a stitch file. The new thing about this is that you can use actually a multi-head machine where it automatically switches on and off the heads according to what name is actually being stitched out. That will save you a lot of time in the running time because you can do all the, um, all the emblems at the same time and then it will do the names after each other. I will show you this in the next few minutes how you can use that for your machine. Right, so let's have a look how we do this on the software as well as on the machine. Okay, so what case we have now is that the, the design itself ran on all the heads. I inserted a stop in the machine and now I, as the operator, whoever is the operator right now, has to switch off all the heads manually. Make sure the first head runs of the first name and then you press the start button again. So now you see that the first name is uh, already run, all the design is done, and now the second name will be run as soon as I press green. Head number one will be switched off now as head number one did already the first name. Head number two will be activated now. And I press green again and only head number two works. All right, so with our quick text function, we will now do this all fully automatic. So you won't need the operator to be at the machine all the time. You just load in the names once and it will automatically allocate the names to the heads. Therefore, we have here our GIS quick text 10 program. It's a separate program, but it's installed while you already installed the GIS base pack 10. And here are already two machines prepared. So this is actually a local folder on my computer when I'm traveling or whatever. Here's my six set machine from our showroom. This is connected via ring buffer. So if I create my template and my names here, it will automatically pop up on the machine. Another advantage is that the names will, after they've been stitched out, disappear from your machine. So you don't waste all this capacity on your T8 with all these names you will never stitch out again. I want to run this machine with head selection, so I tick this box here and you see because I already um, implemented my machine, I have here six active heads. Let me just quickly click in here. You see I have six heads and all of them are working. If you don't want to work with maybe two of them, it will allocate the four heads with your names. But now they're all fine. I would run with all six of them. And here is my actual template so I can pre-install them if I always have the same logo just different names you store your template once if you go here under this if you click here you can see the different templates that have been used once if I activate this one here you would go to template setting and there we have a quick look we actually work with single motive because each of the heads have one t-shirt or one whatever so I say single motive I set the size of my embroidery field. Make sure the emblem has to fit in there too. So measure your size first and then you assign it here. I have, I don't know, you can put this to how many you ever wanted. And I want to transfer them to the ring buffer separated, which is normally done for the other programs here. It shouldn't really make a difference as it is in the ring buffer connected anyways. Next. Uh, template name still here. Here you can pick your design. Make sure, so if you receive a stitch file from the customer, just always open it in base pack once and save it as a base pack file. A stitch file won't be noticed here, so it has to have this base pack raw file. So I actually pick this one here, open, and it will then you can move it here in your stitch field. If you click on X position, it will be in X direction, be centered. I might do it with the Y position too. And I want to embroider the design first. 
So, depending on your design, you could theoretically, if you untick this box, let the machine embroider all the names first. I leave the embroidery design first. Then you can assign the text. I want the text on a curve. And here you pick your font type. I prepared this one here already. You can also use the pre-installed text formats you also use in your base pack. There are some other videos on this if you have a look on YouTube, if you need further information on that. You pick the needle with which you want to stitch out the name. Make sure if you already use needle number one in your design, it will also pick up the color that you used in that design. So make sure you pick the right color here. Font size. Text alignment like in Word or any other program. If you go to extended, you also have here your trimming options, your underlay settings. You can pick the connection between the letters. So where do you go from one letter to the next? Um, here's your, your satin stitch. So the actual stitch of the letters. You can also add a running stitch on top. In some fonts, you can even set a satin stitch to go around but further information on that at a different stage. My distance here is at 3.6. My underlay settings, if you go to extend it, you find all the parameters you have in your, you have also in the base pack. Let me cancel this for now. One more thing, if you go on text on a line, you actually have the possibility to use a condensed font. So you know that it will always make sure the letters and the names fit in the embroidery field. If you have the doctor so-and-so with a double name, which is very common in Germany, you have a pretty long name and then it will start to condense the font. So let's say if you have to shrink the font smaller than 90%, I don't want you to shrink it any further. I would rather want you to use a different font. Yeah, you would use a complete different font. You can set the settings as much as you want. Leaves you many options to make it look very neat to get the perfect result for your letters and for any kind of name. I stick to my plan here and I will put my name on the curve so that it fits in the stitch file. I go to next and here you actually position your, your letters. Yeah, with the ascent you can move it again. You can add the angle range. So let's say 12 you would have a longer line it depends on your on your on your design really yeah i already assigned this and i ran this already before so this will yeah so here you can actually lengthen your your line which you want to write on do you want to align the letter straight or according to the line writing directions imagine you you are on the top of your circle yeah if you would want to write here you would change the order that's it for now here and you could even like I said before, if I want something on top, you could make now another text. Yeah, so if I now would want to add an additional text, I could do that too. So maybe Z is K on top and maybe lean at the bottom. No problem. One more thing here, the order of embroidery. So if I do my template and my names on the cap, I would like to start from the center and go out to the side step. I have no more text, so I say no more text, please. And I go to next. Okay, now I go back to imagine we have a template. So we would consider to really embroider a staple of names. So we actually plan to put several stitch files on top of each other with different names. I say I want to be in the first embroidery field. In our case here it's fine because we have one embroidery field. If you would have, you know, a real, um, if you have for example the case of a border frame where you put maybe 20 names in, you would have other possibilities. For us it's the first embroidery field and I want to start in the center. That's my start point. This makes also sense if you do the alignment on a t-shirt, you make a little marker there and then you can assign it to that. I say finish and that's it. If I now made any changes, it will ask me here if I want to save my settings. If I say yes, it comes up uh, with the Explorer, wherever you want to store it. I say no, better not. And that's it. Right, so this template is set. Now I need my names. I could start writing my names here and say the number and the needle. I would like to have it much easier and I say I already prepared a text, I received a text from the customer and I would say import text. Here are my names. This is actually a simple TXT file so you can get your customer there that he or she is sending you the list of names with crazy names where you don't know the spelling of, you can only make mistakes. In that case, the customer is in charge of writing the names and you just load the names in. 
open and then you see here I have three times NSK, two times Maybelline, then Johnny, Carol, Mary, Ramona, Nadine. All done with needle number one. You could even say, okay, this one should be done with a different color. No problem. That's it. I have my names. I said I want to use all six sets of my six set machine on the showroom. I decided my template and that's it. I will send it to the machine. So now that we created this file on the quick text function, we connected the machine via ring buffer to my computer, my office next door. And the new file directly pops up here on the screen. And the nice thing is after the names are done, they will disappear from the screen. So you don't spoil all your capacity here with all these names. Um, and the first stitch file consists out of six names and then just the next one is loaded and so on. But you don't even have to worry about this. This will all automatically be done via the quick text. All six sets actually did our emblem already. Now that all the designs will be finished, only three heads will work on our name ZSK. Remember, we put in three of them. So three heads will run with this automatically and then go on to the next heads. We will see this in a minute. Let me just start the machine. And now that head four and five are finished with the name Maybelline. Number six is being activated in a second, so there will be thread trim. And then it switches to head number six automatically to run the last name. It's all done without any operator being necessary to switch on and off the head. So far we're fine with everything fully automatic. Um, all the heads switched on and off by themselves. Leaves us one open question. Where does actually what t-shirt go? So therefore we have this PDF file that we can automatically export when we send the order to the machine. To create that PDF, you click here on to print order info and it will create a PDF which contains the actual name allocation on the machine. So that you can actually hand this to the operator and he or she knows exactly where which name will be stitched out on what head. In addition to that, you can leave a comment here for the operator. So find your own system. I don't know. You can write, take the fruit of the loom shirt or, you know, this and that name, it's this size however you find your way. And I will now send this again to the machine and it will automatically open my printout window. I will now simply create a PDF file here. Okay, save as PDF, maybe on my, yeah, my template folder. Okay, and now this is already on the way to the machine. And in addition to that, I have here my PDF file. So I have 10 names, six heads, a little bit of mathematics gives us two passes. That means two stitch files being created and sent to the machine after each other. ZSK comes up three times. So head one, two and three will do ZSK. Four and five will work afterwards together to do Maybelline. Head number six will do Johnny. Then the new stitch file will be loaded and so on. And together with the list from a customer here with the product and the size, you're actually able to load the machine with the correct sizes and the correct t-shirt or whatever product on the referring head. So you give the operator a piece of paper where it actually says what head is fed with what name. So you know then, okay, my yellow t-shirt for ZSK will be XS on head number two and then there's a black one. <laughs> Then there's a black one on uh, on head number one also with the ZSK and then you're fine, you can't do anything wrong. So this is our quick text function. As you see, it's super easy to set up. Um, there are a few more functions where you can, you know, further optimize your embroidery. For now, I want to show you how easy it is. And if you actually wonder what we did the past 15 minutes, I have a quick sum up here for you. So the quick text itself you have already, if you have a base pack, is that you can, that you actually stitch out a list of names and you can do it without any spelling mistakes or positioning problems as they are always automatically placed in the same spot. Then we have the new thing is actually the quick text with head selection, which enables you to run your templates of names on a multi-head machine so that your run and production time is actually minimized. And on top of that, to actually allocate your names, you can um, get a printout so you know which product to actually place on what head. 
And what do you have to do now? You can upgrade now to Base Pack 10 Professional. It's an exclusive ZSK thing, so you can do it with our machine, with our software. And you check out the YouTube channel ZSK Stick Machine for some more tutorials also in the future. If you don't want to get training on the software just yet, go through the tutorials for now. There are a lot of basics for the ones that are new to embroidery and um, should be quite easy to learn. And if that's not enough and you want more information, you can also contact your local representative. Here's once underneath the um, web page where we can inform you about which representative you have in your country. If you still have any other questions, or I hope you have some questions, you have now the chance to contact us. Also, if you have any other questions, always directly contact us via the um, ZSK webpage. This quick text function is actually available in our base pack professional. If you have questions about these software packages, there are some more videos. Also, contact your local distributor or ask me. So I'm waiting for your questions. And if not, I thank you very much for watching and I see you next time. Bye bye.